call this meeting to order and ask the clerk to please call the roll. Trustee Kammerer? Present. Carbonero? Here. Daney? Here. Gabrenya? Here. Hopkins? Here. Ranky? Here. President Wallace? Here. First item on our agenda this evening is under building and zoning, Chairman Hopkins. Thank you, President Wallace. We have two items on our agenda. Uh, the, the first is the downtown overlay district form base code. And with that, would you explain this, please? Thank you, Trustee Hopkins. Um, before you again tonight is the draft downtown zoning overlay district, otherwise known as the form base code. Um, the staff sent out public notices to all of the surrounding property owners. The Zoning Board of Appeals reviewed the draft document on October 3rd. The Zoning Board recommended approval, and we have uh, Leslie Oberholzer, who is our consultant with Codometrics here tonight, if you have any technical questions on the document. Any questions from the committee? Bill, I had asked at one point if this new Streets of Bartlett was actually up to this code. We haven't looked at Streets of Bartlett. For this code, we looked at more brewing and- You know, it's kind of horse cart thing. 120 Live, right. Um, we can look at it if you'd like, sure. Well, I think it's a little late now. It's almost all done, but- It's always good to know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was, I'm always interested in when they're putting stuff up that fast to make sure the quality is there and it's gonna be looking that way for a while. So that's all I have. And I'm assuming that the, uh, the possibility of a street change through the streets of Bartlett is still in the text. I didn't get to that part to be truthful. It's just shown on, on a map as a recommendation, okay. yes. I don't know why they don't remove that. I don't know why they can't vote for it because they don't remove it. So we'll uh, send this on to the uh, village board for a vote. Sounds good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The next item on our agenda is the zoning text amendment for fence heights. With that, could you also? Uh... Yes, I can. Thank you. So the hits kids keep on coming. So back in July, um, the village board reviewed and approved a variation uh, request for a six foot tall fence, um, which was approximately 25 feet off of the property line along South Bartlett Road. And it was located in a corner side yard. And the board directed staff to review their fence height requirements in corner side yards when fences are set back from the property line and especially along major roadways. Staff went back and reviewed all of our previous variation requests for five foot and six foot tall fences in the corner side yards. And we went back um, to 1991. And we have provided you with charts and the, um, in your memo in your packet tonight that show uh, fences based on height the distance from the corner side property line as well as by street type. And what we found is that the Zoning Board of Appeals recommended approval and the Village Board granted two variation requests, one for a five foot tall fence, another for a six foot tall fence, um, both located along a major arterial. And we define a major arterial in the Village of Bartlett as uh, Lake Street, Route 59, and County Farm Road and those fences were set back six inches from those roadways, or from the property line, I should say. Uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals has generally recommended um, fence variations for fences five and six feet tall <coughs> when the fence is set back at least 10 feet from the corner side property line. So before you tonight is staff prepared a text amendment to the zoning ordinance which would increase the fence height in the corner side yard from four feet to six feet, provided the fence is set back at least six inches from roads designated as major arterials and 10 feet from um, a 10 foot setback from all other road designations. The maximum fence height in the required front yard would still remain at four feet. The uh, maximum height in the vision clearance triangle would still remain at three feet. And I, I can tell you over the years, Brian and I have had many residents come into the counter um, requesting a fence on a corner side property line and we have had to tell them 
they have to go through this zoning process. And we've, we've gotten pretty much the same response from all of them saying that they feel like it takes away the benefit of owning a corner lot and takes away their usable corner side yard. And so with, with that, this text amendment would allow them to apply for a building permit immediately and they would not have to go through the 45 to 60 day um, variation process. So staff is looking for direction on how you would like us to proceed. I have a question for you, Roberta. Were any of the uh, requests denied by the CBA? Requests for? Variation. Yes, we have had some, yes. Offhand, do you recall? Um, it, the chart is in your packet. It's a summary of all the, it looks like this. It's got the red and yellow on it. It's in your packet, and yes, we've had one. Two, 10, denied. Um, some were set back, and they vary on the how, how far they're set back. 21 feet, uh, we've had 10 foot setback denied before, 29 feet denied. It, each variation request, and we tell this to the um, zoning board, is unique. So it has to stand on its own. And it depends on the location of where they want the fence, um, what type of roadway they're um, abutting. So there are lots of variables involved. Well, this tax amendment would be all encompassing then. It, it could be, yes. Right. If they set their fence back 10 feet from the property line at a minimum. What about the aesthetics of this, Roberta? I mean, let's say there is a four-way intersection at a, some major roads. Mm -hmm. and there happens to be a house that's back property backs up to that intersection and they've had a fence in their backyard and it's been only like a three foot fence, which is, you know, a, a decent look on a corner, but now they raise that to six feet, surround their property on the corner and it's on a major intersection, let's say like South Bartlett Road and Stearns, let's say. Mm -hmm. um, what happens in that situation? They're just allowed to do it then. So what, what we're proposing is actually would provide a more uniform look along a roadway. Because if people chose to come in and change, one, the location of their existing fence, increase the height of their existing fence, and follow this proposed regulation, it would actually provide more uniformity along the roadways. But what about the aesthetics? Sometimes and uniformity it, doesn't necessarily mean it looks good. That's absolutely true. You're right. Well, the, this drew my attention on the last petition we had which looks like the name was Frank at 114 Lamont Parkway. It's that blue house. It was like a foreclosure, and the gentleman came in, fixed it up, and put in that fence. Um, because going north and south on South Bartlett Road, you see a lot of six-foot fences that could arguably be in that corner side yard. Some of the houses are laid out a little funny, but you know, or maybe they're the, the just the side yard. And so that's what drove my question is, as these fence fences age, are we going to have all these people come in and file variance requests when we're probably going to give them to them anyway? So I think we ought to ease that. So I conceptualize this along South Bartlett Road more than Route 59. Um, you know, I mean, I understand the data is the data. But if this, I, I support this because I think it resolves that South Bartlett Road issue. And, you know, many of the major roadways, I guess, Struckman over by me would be the, a similar issue. Uh, we had one a couple of years ago off of Struckman in 59. Yeah. Yep. I, I support this. I think it, it does ease regulation and it, it just, it helps homeowners get what they want faster. And I, I don't see a, a major impact to our, to our community. I'm wondering why in 1994 there was a 29 and a half foot setback and that was denied is that person like a like <laughs> not liked in the village or something? Mm -hmm. I don't get that. And that would would have been like not necessary right now with this ordinance, right? Right. I, I think it, at that time it was a, a six foot high fence, and the, the ZBA um, did not want to grant uh, a fence variations for six foot high fences. The the ten foot setback, I can tell you uh, since I've been here, but. In the last 17 years, every fence variation that has come in set back 10 feet.
has been approved. Yeah. yeah. Well, let me ask you one question. Wasn't George Cozio on the board at that time, and weren't you the deciding vote against that, that individual? <laughs> that's, actually, that's, that's interesting. <laughs> 29 feet. Did not inhale. 29, 29. feet. It's ridiculous. Okay. All right, so we'll forward this on to the ZBA for review. Okay. I agree. All right. That's all we have under building and zoning tonight. Thank you, Chairman Hopkins. With that, I would entertain a motion to um, adjourn to executive session to discuss collective negotiation matters pursuant to section 2C2 of the Open Meetings Act and also item number two on executive session agenda this evening is to discuss personnel pursuant to section 2C1 of the Open Meetings Act. So moved. Second. Moved by Trustee Daney, seconded by Trustee Carbonero. We will call the roll to adjourn to executive Trustee, session. Trustee Kammerer. Get your picture. Yes. Carbonero? Yes. Daney? Yes. Cabrinha? Yes. Hopkins? Yes. Frankie? Yes. We're adjourned to executive session.